Good morning, folks. Uh, this is Billy Trout with the Tennessee Department of Revenue's Taxpayer Education section. And uh, with me today, I have Ms. Katie Julian and Mr. Justin Russell from Taxpayer Services as well. We're here to talk to you today about professional privilege tax. So on behalf of our commissioner, David Gerigino, and our uh, director of Taxpayer Services, Elena Turner, we're, we're just glad to have you with us. We have uh, quite a number of people that have joined us already here online and probably some more will join us here as we get going. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, call your attention to the slide that you see here on in front about our connectivity issues. You should be able to hear me speak now. If you, if you can't hear me, you just see my mouth moving. You may want to sign out and sign back in or use one of the uh, pieces of information that we have here. Now we do have this presentation online right now in slide form. So if you want to get that downloaded and follow along with us at your leisure, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but we'll talk about all the information here, make this presentation, and then we'll have a short time afterwards for questions that you may have already submitted or will submit during the uh, webinar. And some uh, questions we've already gathered from your comments on your registration, so we'll address those as well. So we'll spend about the next 45 minutes on this presentation and uh, give you some really good information. And again, we really thank you for joining us and being a part of today. So with that, uh, Katie, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you and uh, let you go ahead and make the presentation and then we'll discuss afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. And again, thank you, Justin Russell, for being with us today. He is our resident subject matter expert on professional privilege tax. And because he's here, any of your questions that you send in or if anybody were to call about Profi during this hour, uh, you're going to have to wait. Just kidding. Now, we've got we've got lots of people ready to help you, but he is definitely the, uh, the subject matter expert on this. And we're really happy to have you, Justin. So glad y'all could have me. Great. Well, uh, thank you all for being with us today. I was thinking this morning, it's pretty interesting. Pro fee, uh, professional privilege taxes, we, we don't have as many uh, accounts as a lot of our bigger taxes, like business tax and sales tax and franchise excise. But the number of attendees we had registered for this webinar was huge in proportion to how many uh, professional privilege tax accounts we have. And that tells me one of two things, either you all have nothing better to do this morning, which I seriously doubt, or there's a, a lot of people that this tax pertains to that have questions about it and wonder uh, wonder where it came from and why we have it and some ins and outs of it. And we just have to answer those questions for you today. So without further ado, I'll dive in here. What we are going to be going over today, uh, to talk about what professional privilege tax is, who is required to pay, who is not required to pay, when, where, and how to pay it. We'll go over some of our resources on our website and then have some time afterwards to go through your questions with Billy and Justin, so. All right, what is professional privilege tax? The professional privilege tax is an occupation tax that's imposed on people with an active Tennessee license or registration to practice specific professions. Uh, the amount due is 400 annually and as you can see in the bottom of this slide here the the law for this the reference is tca 67 for 1701 uh, basically parts all of 17 is about the professional privilege tax i was just looking this up yesterday and realized that from what i can tell it looks like this law came into effect in the early 90s um, looking through a lot of the registration questions that you sent in Questions such as why do we have to pay this tax? Uh, certain professions saying why do I have to pay? Why do certain others not have to pay? Why is it $400? Basically, right there in the bottom of this slide is why the TCA. The law tells us that we have to administer this tax. So uh, that is that's it in a nutshell. We have to the Tennessee Department of Revenue is administering this tax based on what the uh, law tells us to do here. So. All right, who is required? By law, this tax is levied on persons registered as lobbyists, persons licensed or registered under uh, TCA Title 48 as agents, broker dealers, and investment advisors. 
uh, persons licensed or registered under Title 63 as osteopathic physicians and physicians, and then finally persons licensed as attorneys by the Supreme Court of Tennessee. So as I said um, a minute ago, this law came into effect in the early 90s and since then, there have been lots of changes to the professional privilege tax laws. I think uh, since I've been with Department of Revenue going on almost 10 years now, I think every year we see legislation introduced that would that would change professional privilege tax. And uh, there have been some changes to it. And we'll discuss some of those uh, major ones that have changed in the last few years here in a few slides. Basically, uh, some professions that have dropped off the list of those required to pay. But these ones you're looking at right here are currently uh, in our current period, the ones that uh, the professions that are required to play, pay, I'm sorry, professional privilege tax. One question here uh, that's very common is who is required to pay the business or the individual? So this tax is based on an individual's active license or lobbyists, investment advisors, osteopathic pathic physicians and physicians, and attorneys. The tax is based on an approved FINRA registration for an individual and or business for the professions of securities agents, investment advisors, and broker dealers. Uh, in the blue box here, please notice this. This is a question we get a lot. Um, if the business is licensed as well as individuals that are employed at the business, the tax is due per license. So that means if the business has a FINRA, FINRA registration, as do many of the employees there, uh, each person slash the business that has a license, profi is due on, on each license. The exception to this is if there's a single member of a single member LLC that's registered as well as the single member LLC, the tax is paid by or is required only by either the individual or the single member LLC. So there are some exceptions. Uh, physicians, some physicians may have a special volunteer license those physicians are exempt. Uh, the law defines a special volunteer license as a license awarded to a medical pr uh, practitioner whose sole practice is rendering professional services without remuneration in, free, in a free health clinic at a specified site or setting. So this does not apply to a physician that holds a regular license that does volunteer work. It only applies to, the exemption only applies to physicians that have that special volunteer license whose sole practice is rendering uh, volunteer services. The professional privilege tax does also not apply to in-house legal counsel that does not hold an active Tennessee license. Uh, they're not liable for professional privilege tax. So uh, additionally, attorneys who are suspended should be treated as inactive with regards to uh, professional privilege tax purposes as well. Another exception here, we get lots of questions about this. Uh, this tax does not apply to active United States military members if they have served for more than 180 days during the year prior to the due date of professional privilege tax, uh, which is June 1st. The exemption must be supported each year by provision of orders documenting the 181 or more days of active duty. So. Uh, you can read, I won't read this whole next uh, paragraph here, but if military, if you are a military member and are a member of one of the professions that is uh, required to pay professional privilege tax, you may want to pay some extra uh, attention here to this issue. And uh, if, you, if this does apply to you, we definitely want to thank you for your service for sure. Uh, who is no longer required to pay? So I mentioned that the laws have changed quite a bit recently for professional privilege tax. So in 2019, public chapter 478, it eliminated the tax for these professions that you see here uh, for the tax year beginning on June 1st, 2020. Uh, I'll let you read, read those professions. This is where we may have several people uh, pop off of this webinar if you're in one of these professions and uh, wondering if you still have to pay. Now, I will say there, there's a caveat here. So if you owed for any periods prior to this, so 
basically, if you were still liable for the tax uh, for that June 1st, 2021 period uh, that would have been due on June 1st, 2020, that is still owed. Um, you know, you may, if you're in one of these professions and had a delinquency that was prior to this date, uh, didn't have, uh, or, or if you receive a letter from us saying that you owe professional privilege tax, pay special attention if you're in one of these professions just to see what period it's for, because it may be for a period prior to this and definitely something to not uh, overlook or ignore. But moving forward from 2020 forward, uh, these professions are no longer required to pay professional privilege tax. All right, when to pay. So this is an annual tax that's due once a year. The deadline to pay the $400 tax is uh, on June 1st. So one thing to make note of here, uh, June 1st, 2020 is when this year's professional privilege tax is due. But if you notice uh, on letters or correspondence that you receive from us, it'll say it's for the 2023 period. So this is basically a tax that you're paying for in advance of the of the period. Um, if your license is active on June 1st, this will be due. Uh, in the month of June, we receive an up-to-date report of active licenses from the different regulatory boards and licensing boards that will let us know if um, someone had invalidated or uh, canceled their license leading up to June 1st. If you are in the process of canceling your license right now, you may have received a notice from us, a reminder from us saying that this is due, but if it is, if you have that license or, or registration canceled by June 1st, you will not owe the tax. So uh, for active licenses with no payment, uh, penalty and interest will begin accruing on June 1st. So licenses made inactive on or before June 1st will not be liable for the tax. All right, where to pay? So many of you may have a TenTap account uh, for various reasons. That's our online filing website. Uh, but it's important to note here that online filing is required for this tax. Um, if you're not already set up on TenTap, we've got great information about that on our website. But you can also pay without having a TenTap account and what we call a non-logon payment. And the way you do that is you go to www. .tntap.tn.gov and you'll click on returns. After you click on returns, you'll see some options there and under file a return, you'll see an option for professional privilege tax. Uh, so one thing that's important to note here is that if you are paying for multiple individuals, if you're a business that's paying this fee for your employees, that has to be submitted through a, a logged on to tap account. All right, after you have, uh, I'll go back one more, after you've clicked on the professional privilege tax link to pay using the non log on method here, you're going to be taken to a screen that gives you one of two options of how to pay. So we accept ACH debit payments which basically that is your bank account and routing number and credit card payments. Now that is for credit cards or what, what we consider debit cards. So basically if it's a card, uh, we consider it a credit card for purposes of payment in our system. And there is a 2.29% fee for that. Um, a lot of businesses that pay or if you're gonna get reimbursed or you're using your company uh, a business account, we see a lot of ACH debit payments made for this tax. Okay, so after you choose your payment type, you're going to come to a screen where you are to provide several pieces of information. Uh, the fields here are social security number, your professional privilege tax account ID, the tax due date, your license information, contact information. Just want to let you know here, um, a lot of people don't have all these pieces of information, especially you might be confused about what your account ID is, what's the difference between that and your license type, or so on and so forth. Uh, you, we only need two of the three pieces of, of information between social security number, special privilege tax account ID, and your license ID. So if you just have your, your license number and your social security number, you can proceed through here. If you just have your social security number and your Profi account ID, we can proceed through this process with just those pieces. 
Um, you can also on this page and there's another place as well. We'll go I'll show you later, but on this screen, you can click on, you'll see um, there's a little blue link at the top that says, don't know your account ID, click here. Uh, it'll basically just ask you for some other pieces of information that can help you identify what your account ID is. One thing to note here, if you're a lobbyist, uh, lobbyists have no license number and will enter just a zero in the license ID field. Okay, so bulk filing, I mentioned that just a few minutes ago. Uh, businesses may submit payment on behalf of multiple individuals. Bulk filing allows you to submit one payment for multiple individuals by submitting a file containing each individual's account information. So we're not gonna go too deep into bulk filing right now. We could probably even have a, a full one hour webinar just on bulk filing maybe even. Uh, but I just wanted to call your attention to one place where we've got some really helpful information about bulk filing. There's a link here on our website, tn.gov forward slash revenue. Uh, if you click on taxes, scroll down to professional privilege tax, and then click on file and pay, this is where you're going to find lots of information you'll need uh, about submitting this bulk file. There's instructions there, a link to a document with instructions for preparing and submitting the file, frequently asked questions about submitting. Um, document helping with the format and bulk filing abbreviations, all those resources are on this one site, uh, this one page on our website. And if you have specific questions about uh, bulk filing, you can email broker.dealers at tn.gov. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, one more quick thing to make note of here about bulk filing. It's important to note that it is the individual's responsibility to pay, but a company may remit payment on behalf of an individual. So if you're a if you're an individual who is in a profession that this tax is uh, relevant to, you may think that your company is paying for you. It's definitely a good idea just to verify that. Um, you don't want to end up in, in collections by any means uh, because, because you thought your company was paying and they're not. Definitely something to, to look into and check on just to make sure of. All right, we're going to go through a couple of very frequently asked questions here in the presentation part, and then we'll get to some more in the in the chat section of this in just a few minutes, but a, a question we get a lot is, will I receive a reminder? So back to uh, TCA 67417, uh, the law does require us to notify uh, individuals that this is due. If we receive account information or license registration information from your regulatory board or licensing agency around uh, the springtime of the year, that you're uh, current at that point, you have a current license or registration at that point, you will get a reminder from us. Um, if you have a 10TAP logon, you'll receive it in 10TAP. If we have an email address for you on file, you'll receive an email reminder. Uh, if you do not have a 10TAP logon or email address in our system, you'll receive a letter in the mail. Uh, what happens if the payment is delinquent? So as I mentioned earlier, Penalty and interest do begin accruing on June 2nd. Uh, the professional license may be deactivated if we do not receive payment. Uh, one thing to make note of here is that that payment is still due even if your license is deactivated after June 1st. So let's say your license gets deactivated or registration gets deactivated on June 15th. Uh, you're still gonna owe the full, there's no prorated amounts, you're still gonna owe the full Four hundred dollars for professional privilege tax if that license was active on June first. Uh, and you don't want it to come to this this third bullet point, and which is receiving an assessment letter from the Tennessee Department of Revenue and having the account turned over to the Collections Division if payment's not received. We hope that doesn't happen uh, to anyone that, that's here for sure. Uh, regarding also getting your reminders from us, updating your address. Uh, we get that question a lot. How do we update our address? Beth, definitely you can contact us. Uh, best way is to send an email to revenue.support at tn.gov. That way you can put in the email the correct contact information. We have it there. But also it's very important that you 
always make sure that your licensing board or registration agency has your updated contact information as well. We receive uh, files, book files from these boards and registration agencies that have all the contact information and licensing information for you. So if you have updated it with your licensing board, we're going to get that information as well. But if you want to just double check and make sure we've got the correct information for you, you can send us an email at that revenue.support at tn.gov email address. Uh, so next question, I am licensed in more than one profession for which this tax is due. Do I pay the fee for each license? So only one payment of $400 is due, regardless of the number of licenses that a professional may have that are subject to this tax. Let's say you're a lobbyist and an attorney, um, you would only owe $400 for the year. I don't know if you can hear that, but my dog is barking. It's the delivery. <laughs> uh, okay, so some resources I wanna share with you now from our website. Uh, tn.gov forward slash revenue. There are basically three great places to find information about professional privilege tax. The first I uh, mentioned earlier, you go from our main page, click on taxes, and then you just scroll down to professional privilege tax. Lots of resources and information there. Uh, all of our taxes have a special section on our revenue help page. So this is basically frequently asked questions and articles regarding lots of different aspects of all of our tax types, but from revenue help, you would click on professional privilege tax. And this webinar is going to be on our taxpayer education webpage. So go to taxpayer education, then click on tax webinars, and then web webinar video archives. So that goes for all of our different tax types. If you want to view any of our previous webinars, that's where you go. This recording, this webinar today is being recorded and will be posted on this webinar video archive tomorrow. Another page here that I want to bring to your attention, some other resources, this is on TenTap. Uh, when you go to that TenTap home, you can click on information and inquiries and professional privilege tax info here. You can look up professional privilege tax account numbers and you can also check on professional privilege tax account status from here. And here's some basic contact information for the Department of Revenue. If you've got any questions, we are around uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, uh, except for on holidays. And you can call us anytime, email us, again, revenue.support at tn.gov. We answer those immediately during business hours. Uh, even on, let's see, on tax day, last Monday, which was on the 18th this year, I think we, we received thousands of uh, emails and support tickets and way more than that phone calls and we're able to to handle everything so we will get back to you and when you call our helpline you will actually get a human being which we're proud to say that there's uh, very short wait times if any there and we're ready to answer your questions if you have any especially account specific uh, questions we are going to move on to a chat q a section here in just a moment but if you do have specific questions about your account, definitely email us or call us. Any other questions you have about professional privilege tax, throw them into the chat here. And I'm going to bring back Billy Trout and Justin to start going through some of the questions we've gotten in chat and some of the questions we got from your registration forms now. Hey, guys. Hello there, Katie. Thank you very much. Nice job. Sure. So, boy, did these people have some questions today. So some really good questions. So, uh, Katie, before we go into this deep, would you mind going to uh, our website, please, and showing something to some people? Uh, because I think, right. I think this might be uh, helpful as a general overview, and then we'll talk about some of these questions that we've got. So Katie's going to jump out on the website here. Okay. That's, that's our page? website. Okay. Yes, tn.gov slash revenue. So Katie, the, the link there for TNTAP, where it says TNTAP, let's click on that real quick. And this is where you're actually going to make your payment. So this is what uh, Katie was telling you about either signing in by having a username or password in the top right corner there, or if you're doing a non-logon, 
there was a procedure discussed about that for view return links right there in the middle where she's clicking right there. And then you see professional privilege tax on the next page. And there's where you make your payment. Okay. So, so that's answers like 75% of our questions about how do I make these payments? How do I do this? Okay. So we wanted to point that out to you first of all there too. And Katie, if you don't mind, would you go back to the front page of the website also? And, and let's talk about something that's extremely basic that a few people have had questions about in chat. And if you will go to professional privilege taxes from the list of taxes there, Katie, and see we have an alphabetical list and she'll pull up professional privilege tax and it'll pop up there. Okay, man, I don't know if you can blow this up or not, Katie. Can you make that bigger? So yeah, let me... older people like me, we can't see stuff, you know? Okay. How's that? That's pretty good. Okay, so okay. scroll that a little bit. We have the following professions are required to pay the tax on June 1st, 2020 and thereafter. So June 1st, 2022, yeah. Okay, so we have attorneys securities agents, broker dealers, investment advisors, lobbyists, osteopathic physicians, and physicians, right? If you're not one of these people, you're not subject to Tennessee professional privilege tax, okay? Now, say all that to say this, um, uh, at least one person in chat had a question about why is it just these professions, okay? And why is it not other professions? Well, quite honestly, here at the Department of Revenue, our job is to administer the laws passed by the Tennessee General Assembly, okay? So the Tennessee General Assembly has decided that these are the taxable professions currently in Tennessee. The list used to be a lot larger. Katie, click the blue box there and show the people who used to be, and this includes the people that currently are, but you see this was a larger number, okay? But the legislature decided that they would cut this back and go to the smaller list of professions as of a couple of years ago. Okay. So is that the Department of Revenue's decision? Absolutely not. We're not the legislature. Okay. So that is what's decided. One individual had a question in chat about what do we do with the money? Now that's a fair question. Okay. So the law says. Uh, that the monies from per Tennessee professional privilege tax go into Tennessee's general fund. Okay, what does that mean? That means the general fund is used to fund government services of all types. Things like building roads, uh, paying for schools, things that the general tax revenues go to. So there's no specific earmark for the tax other than the general fund. Okay, and it's been that way you know, literally for years since we've had the professional privilege tax. One other thing I want to talk about real quick before we let Justin talk, who is the expert, by the way, thank you very much. And that is about uh, potential new laws. So like uh, one of our participants said uh, that they think they saw something in the legislature now that would eliminate or reduce the tax, possibly even eliminate it for physicians and, and osteopathic physicians. We have not received the information yet on that. So we can't really give you any official comments on it because we understand that that is not actually law yet. So until we get that information and that it is law, we're not gonna be able to give you any comments on it. Um, we, we are tracking that and we would encourage any of you who are in that boat to continue to track that through our website, through the media, things of that nature too. What we find oftentimes, and Katie may agree with me on this, uh, because she and I do a lot of uh, looking at bills and things, is a lot of times the legislature will make changes, but they'll make it for the next upcoming tax period, as opposed to one that's happening immediately. But we don't know. Do you agree with that, Katie? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, but, but like uh, you would agree too, that we just have to wait and see what the legislature says, correct? Yeah, and sometimes we don't even hear about last minute things. So we get surprised sometimes wait, wait until it's on the governor's desk and gets actually signed by the governor. We sometimes don't even 
not even kept totally abreast of things. Right. Lots of lots of legislation flies in in those last minutes of the General Assembly each year. <laughs> Yes, it's very busy in the General Assembly. It sure is. But at the same time, we are very good about putting information out as we get it. So when you go to our website, you'll look for things like legislative updates and important notices and things like that. So uh, we'll keep everybody in the loop on that. Uh, Katie's going to show you legislative updates. Legislative summaries is, is actually shown under legal resources there. And of course, if you, she'll click that, and then you'll see that we have ones from years back. So we'll we'll have a 2022 up there before too long, as soon as we figure out all the legislation that's actually going to go through. Okay. Um, thank you for your patience on that, and thank you for submitting your questions to that too. So now, Mr. Justin Russell, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Billy. Can you explain all of it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we got another four hours, I can go into everything, but I don't. I don't think anybody's uh, that free today. J Justin is uh, the supervisor over the area that handles most of the uh, inquiries that deal with account-related issues on the professional privilege tax. So he is the guy to know. All right. So. Um, Justin, will you talk just for a few minutes about bulk filing and some of the things that you see about people that, that do this and some maybe a couple of things that they may want to know about, if you don't mind? Gotcha. Yeah, not a problem. So the more often than not, the bulk filing stuff that I see, uh, there's a lot of questions about, hey, uh, one of my people's license has become inactivated, but we've already paid for them. How or how would we go about getting a refund? Um, so in cases like that, uh, one of the best resources I can provide for them is our bulk filing, uh, email address, which is broker.dealers at tn.gov. Um, and they can, they check into a lot of that and they check the distribution of the payments and see where everything went to, or if something couldn't be moved from the bulk filed payment over to the individual account, they can go in and double check everything and make sure on that. Um, now from the registration side of bulk filing, which is more of what I work on, um, one of the things I see a lot is on the bulk filed or on the bulk applications, uh, there's there's a normally a piece of information that's missing or misclicked. Uh, so any time that you file those bulk filing applications, if you can go in and actually put in a good contact number for me or my unit to reach out to you directly, if we have questions about the application, we will give you a phone call and be like, hey, I see this, uh, it's saying this, but did you actually mean this? And we'll go through and get it sorted out right there over the phone just to, that way we don't act start, accidentally start charging your company the tax whenever the company doesn't owe the tax, but you are just paying on behalf of your of your employees. That's probably the biggest mistake I see on these uh, on these ones. That, like I said, put your phone number on there, and and we can actually give you a phone call about it, uh, and if there's any issues at at all. Right, right. That that's great. So so Justin, you know that you, you kind of hit on the fact that you know the bulk filing thing is important and timing is everything. Yes. So bulk filers obviously need to get. Uh, things to us as soon as you can so that we can go ahead and apply the payments correctly onto the system for for the data that we have even if there is some sort of a change in someone's license status before june 1st then we can deal with that obviously there's a there's a way to get a refund you know clearly we would create a credit you can submit a claim for refund on 10 tap you know and that sort of thing and, and we'd be glad to work with anybody that has that situation. Um, <clears throat> along those lines, too, like Katie had mentioned in her presentation, you know, that June 1st date is so important, okay? So that that is the date that the tax is measured upon people, okay? So if you don't have an active license in a taxable profession on June 1st, you don't owe Tennessee's professional privilege tax for this this year that we're speaking of, okay? But if you do have it, then you do owe it. So if you are a person who is in one of these taxable professions that doesn't want to have your license here, 
it is very, very important that you cease your license with the appropriate licensing official before June 1st. If you fail to do it before June 1st, you will owe the entire $400 tax, okay? And the reason for that is because there's no provision in the law that says you would owe something less than that or gives us any administrative authority to remove the tax, okay? So we have to do what the law says. So if you are that person that doesn't wish to have a license here, uh, we're recording this at the end of April uh, in 2022. So you definitely want to make steps now to get with the licensing board or your licensing office. If you work for, say, a broker dealer and you have a licensing office that licenses you, licenses you in many states, you want to work with your office to get you unlicensed in Tennessee if that is your wish, okay? And, of course, we can't tell you what to do. You, only you as a professional will know where you need and want your licensing to be. Okay. Yeah. And actually that does bring up a, a point that I have seen in the chat a lot today, as well as on the questionnaires. Uh, people were asking, uh, I'm retired and no longer practice, but I am licensed, would I still need to pay? The answer is yes. Um, if you have an active license, you would still be required to make the payment itself. Um, now, there's also a, a question that keeps popping up about um, about specifically insurance agents uh, because they are licensed within Tennessee uh, for or for health and or life and health uh, or to sell insurance and stuff like that. But it's important to note that a lot of times you may be working through a broker dealer or an RIA, uh, an investment advising firm. Uh, and you would be registered through FINRA, so we would be we wouldn't be look we may not look at your uh, license at the license for insurance, but we would be looking at your FINRA registration. So it may be because of your FINRA registration that you would have the liability. So in other words, uh, Justin, I think it's pretty easy to see there that a uh, that an insurance agent who purely sells life and and um, health insurance or car insurance and doesn't do any sort of investing um, or any type of advising and financially or anything like that is not subject to the tax but those that are, do the other services could potentially have that correct that is correct uh, however it is best to reach out if you are working through uh, through a firm or you are or you do work uh, partially through a company that is registered as a broker dealer to reach out and check with their compliance officers to make sure that you're not actually registered to sell securities through them when you're not actually doing it. Hey, that's a good point. That's a very good point too. Justin, will you talk for just a moment about the military uh, exemption for yes. folks that are in the military active duty? Most certainly. Uh, there has been a couple questions about this. Uh, one. One of the questions I've seen repeated a couple times is how do we measure that 181 days? So what we do is we actually go back and we look back to the start of the previous year. So we go all the way back to June 1 of the previous year. And if you serve 181 days active duty military, and I do want to emphasize active duty, uh, then all we would need is a copy of your orders, uh, during or during those times, and we'd be able to get you that get you the exemption. Uh, now, if you happen to have 181 days that's broken up, say you were a National Guardsman who became activated, and over the course of the year you had three different deployments that equaled up to 181 days, we would need a copy of each one of those deployment orders. Okay. Um, and. And uh, for active duty military, we would also need a copy of your orders every single year because uh, we don't maintain a database on who's active duty currently and and who left active duty or anything like that. So uh, we would need a copy of your orders each and every year so we can go in and re-implement it. All right, very good. And also, I believe that if someone is active duty as of June 1st on the due date, 
that they they have an extended uh, date for which to make a payment. Is that correct, too, Justin? Um, actually, that's if they have been deployed, they have an extended date. Deployed. Okay, yes, that's, if they that's are, important. Yes, right, they because they're going to be overseas. Yeah, well, if they're deployed in a in a hazardous duty combat zone, uh, combat for zone. for individuals who are say, or for individuals who are say stationed outside of the United States, say. If there's a, if you're an attorney or you're a JAG attorney working in Germany, you, because that's not an active duty zone, you would still have to pay on or by June 1st. And it, it would be by, I believe, or whatever I'm wrong, Billy, but uh, we start going through and looking at penalty and interest at midnight central standard time, right? That's correct. That's okay. correct. Okay, I, I I can never remember. Um, right, this might be a good time to mention too that you know it, the Tennessee's laws require the uh, the payment of the tax timely, just like all of our other taxes do. So it's really not any different than that too. Um, at different times, though, uh, we will send out letters like we do with other taxes, saying, "Hey, you know, you owe this much tax, and don't forget to go ahead and pay that." So if you get any correspondence from us then that says you did, forgot to pay it or whatever and you think you really didn't forget and maybe we misplaced your pay but let us know through uh, one of the contact points that you see here that katie's got up on the screen um you know we're glad to work with you we don't want anybody to pay any extra money to us uh, i know that sounds like uh, maybe the government uh, is <laughs> something you might want not hear from a government person but that's honestly true our, our thing is to only require the payment of the actual amount of tax. We do not want to charge you penalty and we do not want to charge you interest, but we do have to do it if the law says for us to do it. So um, at any rate, uh, that's that that's a good uh, point to be timely there, I guess is what we're trying to say. And actually there are some questions coming in right now about the active duty uh, status. Um, so, Whenever we're referring to active duty, we are talking about active duty military, um, and this is in comparison to being just a reservist or a non-activated National Guard. Uh, this exemption does apply to all active duty person or all active duty military personnel. Uh, so, um, whenever we talk about being deployed to a war zone, we are talking about uh, individuals who have been deployed to a war zone and have since gotten out they would have an extension uh on the or on the professional privilege tax depending on when they got back for instance if they're deployed to a war zone on june 1st we're not you know you're going you have far you have many more things to worry about than paying a tax we are going to extend it for you um and that will be automatic as soon as you get back you just tell us hey i was in a i was in a hazardous zone and we'll go in and get and get that extension placed on for you but you will need to reach out to us because uh, if you don't tell us we won't know right right so communication is extremely important on this tax yes. like it is our other taxes too there's a question i saw just scanning here real quickly um, have a new attorney starting with us on July 1st, 2022. Are we responsible for his payment? Okay, guess what? That's sort of a trick question. Okay, let me tell you why. Are you responsible for his payment? I don't know. Are you going to make his payment for him? Uh, great question, you know, but even more important than that, this is July 1st. So we know the tax is June 1st. And will this new attorney have a Tennessee license on June 1st, or will they get a Tennessee license somewhere between June 1st and July uh, when uh, the person comes on board? So there's a lot of ifs, a whole lot of ifs in that, okay? So in other words, timing is everything, okay? Look at when the individual who holds the license, if they have that on June 1st, there's going to be tax liability. And again, only for listed professionals that have these certain licenses. And if it's not on the list on our website, the profession is not subject to Tennessee professional privilege tax. Okay. Um, 
guys, can you think of any other things that we need to hit real quickly before we begin the wrap up here? Um, there was one other question that I saw. Um, let's see here. Uh, can I pay or so one of the questions that come up, can I pay any time throughout the year? Um, you can make what's known as a customer payment with a with a log on and it would just set as a credit on your account, which that would go directly into the tax. So that is possible, but we don't go in and actually put the tax out there where it's payable via the non log on until the end of March, beginning of April. Um, so you wouldn't be able to use the non log on function to to make a payment outside of outside of the assessed or out of, outside of the period, the time frame in which we assess it. Right, and, and that's that's important too, Justin, because timing again, like we said before, is everything. But we have a, our own timing issues at the Department of Revenue, in that we're working with all of these licensing boards and all and getting all this information input like you said so that we can go ahead and have the tax accounts ready for payment for the majority of our professionals there too knowing also that people cease their licenses or start new licenses between the time that you we gather this initial data in june 1st so there's there's a we have to reconcile some of that and we update our files and we get that information in and give everybody the opportunity to file and pay timely. And of course, if if you cannot find your account out here, and you know that you have that active license, reach out to us by email. We'll provide you with a form so you can go ahead and give us the information and we'll create your account for you so that you can go ahead and get it in on time. OK, uh, we, we're we're very glad to work with you. We're we're uh, we know this is a burden. We know you as professionals have plenty of other things to do besides to worry about this $400 tax, but but we're grateful for the fact that you're reaching out to us and doing that too. Um, maybe this is a great time to point out, Katie, again, how do people reach out to us here? Will you hit these uh, main points here on your slide one more time, please? Sure, uh, just uh, we've been to our website a few times now, tn.gov slash revenue, emailing us at revenue.support at tn.gov. Our phone number is 615-253-0600. And real quick, I'm gonna share web browser and take you over to Revenue Help. Um, this is our, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, our main web page www.tn.gov slash revenue if you click on revenue help here and then under taxes scroll down to professional privilege tax uh, let's look at all 12 this is going to answer a lot of uh, a lot of your questions that you may have okay and another place to get a message to us, uh, same as revenue.support at tn.gov. If you look for the answer to your question here on revenue help and don't see it, you can also, if you scroll down at the bottom of the page on all of these revenue help pages, submit a request. Uh, you can click there and that's another way to get a message straight to us uh, that we'll answer during our business hours. Right, and if we, if we haven't gotten to your chat question today, we certainly apologize knowing that we have quite a number of people online with us today too is a little bit of a challenge but uh, do, do go ahead and call us or send us that email or the or the revenue help message it's the same thing and uh, and one of our folks will get right back to you we promise uh, our goal is to get back to folks uh, if you send us an email within two business hours uh, and we generally do that well within that time uh, our phones, uh, we answer our phones. How about that? Unusual for government, right? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, we answer the phone. We do. And we have plenty of people available now that our April um, 18th tax deadline from last week has gone by. Uh, we have folks that will be most happy to take your phone call too. Okay. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up today and uh, we thank you again. So on behalf of Justin and Katie and everyone at the Department of Revenue, we, we thank you for attending today and we hope you have a good rest of the day.
Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. You can view this recording tomorrow on our taxpayer education website. Just come back if you want to uh, share it with anyone. Um, and also on your way out of this room, this virtual room, uh, take a, just a brief second and fill out the survey. It'll help us uh, make any miss or changes or get, take your feedback and um, help our webinar series. So appreciate that. Next month's webinar is going to be on sales tax for contractors. And that's, uh, as always, on the last Tuesday of the month. I believe that's on May 31st next month. So hope Correct. to see you then. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Justin, for joining oh, us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Sure.